Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a, well, it's sort of a this is not a top 10 video, but uh, I'm going to call this vintage summer fragrances. And so this is sort of a seasonal list. I don't do very many seasonal lists, but two things happened that ended up pushing me to do this video. Number one, apologies for not doing a video yesterday. Uh, I had a co-worker that I actually worked with for the last 15 years up and retired, just out of the blue. He decided, you know what, it's time to hang up the cleats. And uh, he is going to sell everything that he has, including his houses, uh, everything, all of his assets. And they are moving to Costa Rica, like Saturday. And so we had one more night of just uh, going to have cigars and drinks with, with him. And so it was good to see him one more time. Uh, but in Costa Rica, he says he's going to put his, be his feet in the sand and live stream the ocean for us so we can kind of uh, see the water and be jealous while we have to work and he gets to uh, retire. And, uh, well, really, uh, three things. I said two things happened, but three things. Uh, it is May the 11th today, and it's already in the 90s in Texas. It feels like summer. It has that Texas muggy heat. And somebody, I think maybe a newer subscriber, left me a comment, and I do try to listen to you guys. Believe it or not, I do try my hardest. And uh, he said, you should do a vintage summer list. And I thought, you know what? That would be a good idea because everyone does their seasonal lists, but very few people do vintage-focused lists. So I figured, what the hell? We'll call this uh, a vintage summer list 2023. Maybe it'll be even become a you know yearly thing if it, if it does well enough. And um, so, so a couple quick things before we start showing bottles. So number one, uh, you're going to see some of the aquatics in my collection. You're going to see the fresher citruses and stuff that I think I want to reach for in summer. But you're also going to see some fragrances that I like to wear in summer that you may not necessarily think are summer fragrances. Remember, this channel is about highlighting what I'm wearing and, and you know my thoughts and feelings about it, uh, about the fragrances. And so you're going to see some in here that you might kind of do the old um, why is that in there? And I'll explain why, but, uh, these are the fragrances that I like to wear in summer. And then final, the final rule is I think of vintage fragrances as 20 years or previous. Okay. So I think of 20 years and previous as being vintage fragrances. So it is 2023. So technically I'm giving myself to 2003, but I didn't even use that. I didn't even go all the way to 2003. There's none from 2003. There's none from 2002. Most of them are actually... 2000 and before. However, I did basically almost cheat. I tried to keep them all 2000 and before, but there is one 2001 that I just had to put in there because I consider it a summer staple. And uh, finally, the other thing is most of these I know very well. Some of them I actually don't. Some of them are newer to the collection, but I think they would be fragrances that I would want to reach for in summer. So just keep that in mind. Some of these I know like the back of my hand. Some of them I'm still getting to know, but this is going to be my 2023 vintage summer list. So let's get started. So first let's do scent of the day as is traditional on channel Ram. And today I actually wore a fragrance that showed up on my, uh, this is not a top 10 office or work fragrances, uh, fragrances that are good for the office. And it's been a while since I've worn this as my scent of the day. And I, and I'll tell you what, uh, you can definitely tell that this is a flanker. And I think these two flankers that Jean-Claude Elena did for Hermes are some of the best flankers ever in, in the history of flankers. I honestly think they are that good, especially Bellamy Vetiver. But this is the other one that I always kind of push it to the side. It never gets the love Bellamy Vetiver does, you know, gets from me because I love that one so much. Uh, as Bellamy is one of my favorite fragrances. And I think that is just a great flanker. Um, and But this one also, I actually think that um, this is a very underrated flanker. Uh, it's from the House of Hermes, of course, and this is called Equipage Geranium. So this obviously is not in the list. This is my scent of the day, uh, but this could be a summer reach for, for some folks. This could, could easily be in the list if this was older. It smells older. This smells like it came out in the 70s or 80s or, or early 90s. It has that vintage feel to it. There's clove, geranium, and sandalwood. And Jean-Claude Elena kind of working his, um, obviously I think they're being a little bit coy with the notes, but Jean-Claude Elena working his magic, if you will, working his um, his 
wizardry to try and uh, take take something like equipage and modernize it, but do it in a simplistic way, and yet it's simple, and yet it's so complex at the same time. And that is Jean-Claude Elena in a nutshell. He can kind of walk both sides of that line, and here he does it absolutely beautifully. I think this is one of the best geranium fragrances money can buy. I think that uh, also this is one of the best modern sandalwoods that you can buy. It is fantastic. And there's a little bit of a barbershop element to it, I, I should say. And you'll pick that up in the original equipage too, which did not make this list, but easily could have. But this just has such of this old school facet to it that it's harder for me to wear. I actually, this is one of the few times as a vintage head that I think I actually prefer the flanker. There might be a video on that as well. Flankers that are better than the original. But, um, but yes, I think I prefer the flanker when it comes to equipage geranium over equipage. But anyways, that was my scent of the day, and I absolutely enjoyed wearing it to the office. It was uh, it was definitely a pleasure. Here, let's do a, a reapply, shall we? Hell, I got a whole damn bottle to use, right? Got a lot of juice to spray before I die. Uh, I better get spraying. So, so yes, equipage geranium, yeah, really. And you know, you, when it first starts, you can really get that. Um, you really get that equipage, uh, you know, that uh, image of equipage from the past, but as it dries down and that sandalwood comes out more, I've got a three hour dry down here, it um, it starts to kind of do its own thing, but uh, it still keeps the heart and soul of equipage, such a great flanker. Okay, so let's get started on the list. So again, all going to be 2020, uh, 2001 and before on the years. So this one actually dates back to 1993. It's the only amouage on the list. And uh, because otherwise, the only options I would have had, well, really the only options in my collection would have been the original gold, which is insane, or uh, for summer, you don't want to wear that in summer, or um, amouage for women, which also I would think maybe um, not the best summer choice, but this one actually, believe it or not, does work in the heat. The only thing is it is slightly powdery, but this is called Amouage. This is a tester. That's why I got this cheap little cap on it. But this is called Amouage Gentleman's EDT. Gentleman's EDT. And if you go to Parfumo and you type this in, uh, Gentleman's Cologne, also as it's known, Gold Cologne, um, it was originally called Gentleman's Cologne or Gentleman's EDT, and then they changed it to Gold Cologne, I believe, and they just discontinued it altogether. But my understanding of this is this was supposed to be literally a cologne flanker of gold. Gold came out in the 80s, uh, early 80s, 83, I believe, uh, 1983. Yeah, so a decade later, to celebrate the decade anniversary, they came out with this. And uh, the original bottle looks better, obviously. It has sort of this symbol here, more engraved on the bottle. The cap is cooler and all that stuff. But in a nutshell... This has that uh, Amouage Gold floral heart that Amouage really has become known for in my head when I smell things like uh, silver um, or some of those older Amouages that uh, before even Christopher Chong came in and took over, they had a very uh, signature style of the way that they did florals with the Jasmine Rose, Ylang Ylang, that sort of trio of flowers was like the Amouage calling card with, of course, that Omani White Frankincense. This has a beautiful sandalwood note. Uh, I don't know what type of sandalwood, but it's absolutely stunning. I would not be surprised if it is uh, Mysore sandalwood. And patchouli with uh, this very sprightly citrusy opening. You get lemon, orange, and citrus when you first spray. And what is evidently missing, and uh, it's really noticeable, it's almost like a hole when you're wearing the fragrance and, and you know what the original gold smells like. The original gold is one of the most opulent uh, fragrances I've smelled. And much of what you read online is absolute complete BS about that fragrance. But um, one thing that is not BS is the animalicness. There is a lot of civet. It is. Um, it can be very challenging. And um, this one is missing that. It doesn't have the animalic civet. It's not as. Uh, it's not as challenging. I think it's easier to wear, and I think it can be worn in the heat. In that floral combo with the ambery you know, Omani White Frankincense in the dry down, absolutely stunning. Probably uh, one of the best amouages uh, for the heat as far as vintage amouage goes. Okay, so that is the first on the list. Next on the list is going to be a fragrance from, 
A house I don't talk about very often because quite frankly, I don't own very many from this house, but this is the one that I reach for in warm weather. Uh, and it's called Biblos Man. Sorry, Biblos for Man is what it was what it, what it's called now. It's discontinued, but I think originally this was uh, Biblos por Om or, or for Man. I can't remember. But uh, 1993, this came out. And this is, by the way, uh, there's no ranking on this video. So I should mention that. These are alphabetical order, basically unranked. So one is not better than another. You know, maybe next year I can rank the video or something like that. But uh, for this year's vintage summer fragrance video, it's unranked. So this is, um, what I like about this though, is it came out right before that, you know, aquatic wave came and sort of washed everything away, right? So here you still get a little bit of earthiness from the fragrance. There's some earthy nutmeg um, and there's some tarragon, which is actually one of my favorite notes, has this uh, slightly licorice anisic like quality to it with cardamom. And cardamom can sometimes have this cooling aspect to it. Um, and so this fragrance mixes with lavender and thyme, but there is a beautiful citrus opening trio of citruses, lime, bergamot, and lemon, and they last. They're mixed with violet leaf, and I don't know if you can see, but it almost looks like there's a little bit of like a greenish tinge to the bottle, and that violet leaf mixes in with the citruses beautifully to give it a slight ozonic aspect. It's not, it's not gasoline-like your um, Fahrenheit or anything like that, but it dries down to sort of this musky oak mossy vetiver before the uh, aquatic wave came and kind of washed everything away. But if you want something that is still masculine, slightly green, spicy, uh, citrusy, this is definitely one to, to check out. And I think you can still get bottles for cheap because no one talks about this. This is a completely and utterly forgotten fragrance almost. Biblos for man. Okay. Next on the list, and sorry, I've got stuff kind of spread everywhere, so I may be reaching down or across, or, but uh, it's kind of spread on the table. So, uh, next on the list, we've got one from the year 2000, one of the newest fragrances in this entire video, and this is actually from the House of Caron, and uh, this is called L'Anarchiste. L'Anarchiste, and this fragrance was created by Richard Frace, one of his best creations um, it's sort of this fresh, uh, look at this, look at this bottle. I don't know if you can tell, but it almost looks like copper, right? It has this copper pot like feel. And so there's this, um, uh, there is this, there's the note listing on the back, by the way, I forgot this was a, this was a tester that I bought. So, um, there's this sort of minty aspect to this fragrance and it's sort of minty orange blossom. Imagine if you're smelling like minty orange blossom with this sort of woody, vetivery, musky, very musky dry down. But um, imagine you distilled it in like a copper pot. There's a little bit of this copper metallic uh, strangeness to it. And um, this is a fragrance that for summer, at first, I think some people may spray this and just dismiss it because of the note breakdown. And it does have some spicier, woody aspects, but you get a lot of freshness. And that orange blossom and the mint really makes it a very fresh uh, experience. And I think most people just write this off. This is actually a really good um, fragrance for the heat. This works fantastic in the heat for me. I, it never really worked in the cold. Uh, also, I think that the newer bottles are completely fine. So you can get any bottle you can find at any price, but this is actually the original release. And then they put it in more of the standard bottle and now it's just completely discontinued altogether. Uh, Caron just completely discontinued it. Um, I think when the uh, Ailes group took over, they just nixed this one. But um, for vintage collectors that don't wanna pay big money, again, I mentioned Biblos. This is another one that I think you can get still at a very respectable price. People aren't you know, hyping L'Anarchiste online very often. Okay, next we have a Chanel, and it's actually the first Chanel for men. Sorry, it took me a minute to finish that sentence. And it's called Pour Monsieur. Now, this is the Eau de Toilette, and I don't like the Eau de, Eau de, Eau de Toilette normally. However, if I'm going to wear this, um, I'm going to wear it in the heat. That's just my preference because even though this is a very 
reserved, you know, old, I call this old money fragrance. This is an old money fragrance. This is money that doesn't need to scream, doesn't need to shout, doesn't need to, you know, flex or stunt or anything like that, right? This is old money. This is, um, this is, I can walk out in a ripped t-shirt and, and, you know, that I got for free from a cruise and shorts and flip-flops, uh, because I don't have to try. I have so much money. That, that's the feeling of this. It's very classy and reserved though. But, um, you know, the person that I imagine wearing this is dressed to the nines. I don't imagine a, a retired, um, well, maybe you could, you could imagine a retired older gentleman who maybe had this as his scent of the day from, from even the 1950s. But when I picture somebody wearing this, I picture somebody that's got a collared shirt on or a suit even or something like that. It's very elegant, uh, but it doesn't need to scream. It doesn't need to shout, but it's a, it's a proper Sheepra, but it's probably my least favorite type of Sheepra. It's the citrusy aromatic Sheepra. And I like my Sheepras to be um, more, much mossier, much dirtier, uh, give me Mitsuko any day over over something like Four Monsieur. However, uh, I will admit for the heat and for something like this where I can reapply, this is something I'm reapplying every two to three hours probably, honestly. And you can just sort of spray away with this uh, because it has that lemony neroli um, with this orange. So those are the three citruses in the top. Lemon, sorry, lemon and orange in the top with... Uh, Narrowly and vervain with basil, cardamom, ginger, coriander, oak moss, vetiver, and cedar wood. So even though it's a, you know, proper shipra, um, it is in that citrusy style. So for me, I when I wear this, and even though other many people who really like these styles disagree, for me, this and something like Dior's Eau Sauvage are almost interchangeable, the EDT, and that one's coming up very soon. I can wear these in the heat and just sort of spray away, and um, it, um, you know, for me, I almost have no preference. I could wear either and and get the same feeling. It gives me that citrusy, shipra, uh, old school, masculine feel. You could also have talked about something like um, this. Could also be thrown in the list, even though I didn't include it in the video. But uh, Capucci Porom falls into that same category. So these are these are these citrusy aromatic sheepras is is kind of what I would call them and the EDT of Chanel's Pour Monsieur falls into that now the EDP or the uh, EDT Cologne Concentre are are different fragrances uh, I don't think they're proper sheepras and um, you know I think in in the EDP for example which is much more modern anyways but the EDP adds a lot more vanilla. Uh, I think the EDT Cologne Concentrate does as well, but um, that one I decided to, to leave out of the video, but I actually like that one better. Uh, okay, so next on the list we have a Chanel, and you, another Chanel, but actually my favorite Chanel to wear in the heat. And this one may be hard to hunt down, or you're going to have to cough up some big bucks. It's just, it's just the way it is, unfortunately. This was a very limited run. I actually thought it only ran for a year or two and then Chanel discontinued it. I was completely wrong. This came out in 1985 and um, Armando and I were actually doing some research and digging. And as it turns out, um, because of the way that the caps, they sort of changed the logo on the cap. Um, and maybe one video I'll go into it, but uh, they changed the inside of the sprayer. Uh, and so we actually think that uh, this fragrance ran for at least six years because uh, after 1990, 1991 is when things started to change. And there are some bottles of uh, Chanel Antaeus Sport. OK, this is the Sport flanker of Antaeus uh, that go into the early 90s. But it was a 1985 release and they decided to discontinue it. And I still say to this day. Maybe they knew sort of Ego East was, um, they were going to try to focus on Ego East. Or I don't know what they were thinking, but I think that uh, that was Jacques Polge's biggest misstep in my calculation. Now, looking back on it, obviously, it's easy to look back, especially from my eyes. And, and as someone who is talking about the fragrance, not how it sold or anything like that, who knows, maybe it didn't sell very well. But for me, Antaeus Sport is um, a revelation I um, was able to back this up as well. So I have backup bottles 
and um, it's bergamot, lemon, artemisia, peppermint, and pimento with rose, pepper, mace, jasmine with a base of leather, vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, and oak moss. And this may be heavy for most people uh, to wear, even though it is the sport version in the heat, but I have absolutely no problem wearing this. I um, It feels like they took out a little bit of the myrrh and made it less resinous. But what's interesting about that though, and I have a video, I actually have a video on the channel comparing Chanel Zanteus to Chanel Zanteus Sport Cologne. And what's interesting about it is that even though um, they did exactly what you would expect, they took out the, the resin, the resinous aspects, um, you know, that warmth of myrrh that it gives, and maybe they added myrtle in this or whatever they decided to do. But um, it almost makes it to where you can peer into the heart of Antea Sport without any of the fuzzy, heavier resins um, kind of, um, you know, stopping you, holding, holding it back. And um, they didn't tone down the uh, castorium at all. So you still get this extremely animalic castorium from, from the 80s, which I absolutely love. And so even though this is a sport fragrance, uh, it may be challenging for um, somebody that is not used to smelling vintage perfumes. But for me, this is this could be a signature scent. I mean, I could wear Antaeus in the winter, and I could wear Antaeus Sport in the summer. And I could just stick, stick with that. I mean, it is that good. I don't think I could ever get bored of this. It is um, one of my lifetime scents. But for summer, that's when... Anytime I get the urge to wear something like this, I just pull out the Antea Sport. And when it comes to fall and winter and I get the urge to wear something like this, I just go right back to Antea. So uh, that is Antea Sport from 1985. Okay, next on the list, we have some creeds. Now, creeds uh, are almost made for this video. Their, their DNA is made for this because they kind of have what I call this anytime, any place fragrance where you can just pick up a bottle, spray, and bam, it works. It's not meant to be... Many of their fragrances are not meant to be super challenging or anything like that. Uh, but in the old days, the way that Olivier Creed sort of really made his brand stand out is they would take formulas or, you know, they would work with, um, let's say, somebody like Pierre Bourdon. And maybe Pierre Bourdon had a formula that uh, wasn't selling or, or he couldn't, you know, get it. Uh, it didn't win any briefs, let's say. Well, Olivier Creed would take that formula and use it for creed but substitute uh, some of the materials for the highest quality materials you could think of so they would increase the you know the quality of the sandalwood they would add very expensive real ambergris or something like that you know to to make the fragrance smell extremely posh and that's how they justified the higher higher price tags and this comes from uh, if you've ever read this book this is basically where that comes from. The Ghost Perfumer, according to Gabe Oppenheim, he talked a lot about that. Fantastic read, by the way. They talk about Roja Dove. They talk about um, Pierre Montal, which is not his real name, by the way. A um, lot of things that they discuss, but mostly it's about Olivier Creed and um, you know the fact that he hasn't been sued and he wrote that tells you all you need to know about their ability to basically fight back or say that he's lying. Um, but... But what's interesting about it is, um, is that uh, these older creeds I'm going to talk about are perfect for this list because they're made for the warmer weather um, and that creed sort of sandalwood, ambergris, patented, uh, creamy thing that, that they do so well, saltiness, is, is made for the summer list. So, but the first one I'm going to show you, which I'm going to grab real quick, and actually I'm going to turn off the TV because I've got hockey on the background it's distracting me so the first one i'm going to show you is one that you might scratch your head and say this one maybe does not belong in the summer list but i like to wear it in the summer and this is called royal english leather now if you want to laugh um look up when this was released they actually claim this was released in the 1780s um which is absolute whatever you want to call it uh there is no king walking around smelling like uh, Royal English leather in the 1780s. The progression of perfume just wasn't there yet. Um, and, but this fragrance, whenever it was made, let's say it was made in the 70s or 80s or whenever it was, I have no clue when it was actually made, but I can tell you it was not 1776 or whatever Creed says. 
Um, actually, it's funny because Parfumo used to show the 1780 something or whatever it was. Now they took it down. It just says the release date is unknown. So, um, but, but Royal English Leather is discontinued. It's very hard to find. And it's a simple fragrance, but there's something extremely captivating about it. And the reason that I like to wear it um, in the heat is because it has that Creed sparkle. And so what you get is you get this bergamot and mandarin orange. And the mandarin orange is extremely prominent and a big part of the scent. So it's mandarin orange with a little bit of amber, sandalwood. Again, simplicity and leather. And so this orangey, I want you to imagine like an orangey sparkly leather. And so when it's the middle of summer and I crave my leather fragrances that I can't have because leather is my favorite note, this is what I reach for. Um... I actually, I actually think this is the best gray cap. Uh, this and Acia Aluminum are uh, two of my are my favorite EDT gray caps. These were some of the best values that Creed used to offer. Really disappointed they discontinued all of the EDTs. Now all of the Creeds come in EDPs. But um, this is a fantastic fragrance. Absolutely. For a leather lover... It has that, you know, it just has that Creed sparkle about it with a little bit of leather. For the heat, it is spot on. Like when you can't wear your heavier leathers, you can't wear Bellamy or, you know, you can't wear Leonard Pour Homme or something like that. This is definitely uh, to put on the uh, reach for list. Okay, next Creed. Now this is a proper uh, warmer weather fragrance to my mind. And this came out in the year 1985. Uh, and this is a Pierre Bourdon all-time classic green Irish tweed. I love wearing green Irish tweed in the in the summer. I know it's a um, spring staple because Rich Mitch wears this on the first day of, of March every single year. No matter what the weather is, he wears this. And just smelling it from the atomizer, man, it's it, it literally is like walking through an Irish countryside. Um, it's got that green sort of freshness. There's a little bit of peppermint, but just a little bit. Um, there's some green galbanum, lemon vervain, bergamot. Uh, it's lemony. And I think part of the trick is there's this beautiful lavender violet iris. And that iris just makes it seem so posh and so high class. And they claim real ambergris in the base. I don't know if it's real ambergris or if it's Creed's, you know, ambroxan um, you know, concoction that they came up with, with some cedar wood in the base, oak moss, and that Creed sandalwood. So that cedar wood sandalwood combination is, is legendary with Creed, but he ended up, uh, Pierre Bourdon ended up going on a couple years later to create cool water. And of course, Creed's cool water and, uh, green Irish tweed share some similarities. This is actually for you batch, you batch lovers. Uh, this is 14... A01, and that's why it has the fire hose atomizer. Uh, anything early in the year in 2014, you had the fire hose atomizer. Later in the year in 2014, so I had an M01 bottle that actually we used the entire bottle, a four ounce. So this is my second bottle. Um, they changed the atomizer to the to the newer style atomizer later on in the year 2014. But um, I always go for these older creeds. And if you can find this in a four ounce or a 75 ounce uh, before, let's say, the changeover in 2017 to 50 and 100 mils, I mean, go for it. You cannot go. This is a um, this is such a familiar scent to people because you know if you listen to uh, Pierre Bourdon, he basically says that Green Irish Tweed is just the continuation of, or I'm sorry. Um, Cool Water was just the continuation of Green Irish Tweed. That this is almost like the unfinished version and that he finished it with Cool Water. And Cool Water was is, is I think it literally is the best-selling men's fragrance of all time. Uh, so this DNA, it will smell a little bit different to people who aren't big frag heads. It'll have a little twist to it, but the overall skeleton of the scent is going to be familiar to people. So if you're in a formal setting or something or something along those lines and 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 you want to smell nice accepted right but you don't want to smell anything crazy or wacky this is great even in the heat it just it just shines i love this stuff spring and summer oh no problem wearing this in the dead of summer though so green irish tweed okay next on the list we have a 
1992 release. And this is actually one of my favorite aquatic fragrances of all time. It may be, it may compete for my favorite aquatics. Um, although I don't think I'll buy a bottle once I'm done with this, but I do sort of look forward to wearing this and I'm waiting until it gets, let's say a hundred degrees plus to wear this. The hotter it gets, the better this smells. So this is Creed's Arolfa. And I still see bottles of this sort of floating around. I don't know exactly what year this is because it was one of the printed on batch codes and I, um, it rubbed off. It wasn't an engraved one, but, um, Arolfa came out in 92 and it's a Pierre Bourdon release as well. Pierre Bourdon basically carried the house of Creed. I mean, he was like, you know, put, put it on my shoulders. I got this. And that's exactly what he did. Um, and very few people knew about this until recent times, you know. I think when you factor in all of the stuff that Pierre Bourdon sort of did as a ghost perfumer, you have to make the uh, assumption that he's one of the greatest perfumers of all time. But um, this, to me, has big similarities to a scent that his master, his teacher, ended up making a couple years before, which we'll talk about very soon because it's on the list as well. It's also an aquatic-like fragrance, but this is a little bit more um, mainstream. Uh, Edmund Runitzka's aquatic is a little out there. It's, you know, uh, Edmund Runitzka was a quirky guy, and, um, you know, by that time in his life, he was an old man. He didn't give a shit what people thought. He wanted to make the scent that he wanted to make, and he went to some, you know, house that very few, like some mall-like store, um, brand and just put out this scent. And I don't think it sold very well, but I don't think he cared. He just wanted to put it out for posterity's sake. And this shares a little bit of the DNA of that. It is aquatic, but it's also green. Um, there's even a little bit of cumin in the top. So when you first spray these older batches of Arolfa, and if you can get these older batches, again, four ounce or 75 ounce, I would say go for it. The new ones have lost a lot of the uh, texture and depth and detail that made this one of my favorite fragrances. The newer fragrances, the newer versions of Arolfa, and I've smelled the newer bottles. I don't know exactly what year it was, but it was one of the new uh, 50 or 100 mil. I can't remember. Um, it just smells more like a standard aquatic, which is not what Arolfa is at all. The older bottles of Arolfa had that sort of melony aldehyde. I don't know which one it is, but this melony aldehydic thing with um, cumin and uh, lots of citruses, bergamot, lemon, orange. There was green basil, and um, there was coriander, and there was the uh, freshness of ginger. Um, and basically what he ended up doing is he mixed these, he mixed these smells that give off this uh, sort of warm, spicy, um, citrusy with the uh, cumin and he mixed it with this very green pine okay so it almost smells like you're by the sea obviously but maybe behind you is a forest and the the wind is blowing that forest um that that forest smell a pine tree forest smell towards the um towards the ocean towards your nose and it's peppery and what he's done is he's used um cyclamen and jasmine. So he's used some florals to sort of um, build this creation. Um, and then the base. And so you get sort of that floral green, slightly spicy scent. But then the base comes and, and, it, and it turns more musky, but it has oak moss. And a lot of the newer version aquatics that came out, let's say 95 or, or past, they didn't have old school oak moss. They didn't have things like cumin. They didn't have um, those kind of more challenging detail oriented notes. They went just straight for the pure, you know, oceanic aquatic a lot of times. And this does have hints of being an aquatic. Obviously, I think it is technically uh, an aquatic. I mean, there's a damn sailboat on the older boxes, but um, there's so much more to it. And that's why I love these older bottles of Arolfa. Uh, but I think once that, and you can see the dent I've put in this, um, but I think once this is done, I think it'll just be, that'll be the end of my Arolfa day, sadly. Okay, and then next on the list, we have um, 
the newest Creed on the list, which came out in 1997, uh, and this is called Royal Water. Now, Royal Water, just uh, a 30-second blurb about Royal Water. It also has cumin and pepper and basil and ambergris and many of the notes that I think Arafa has, but this goes in a completely different direction. They've turned up the musk. Creed says there's Tonkin musk in the base, which is very, very expensive. I don't know if that's true or not, or if they're just saying it smells like Tonkin musk. Um, but this is, to me, the one of the best juniper berry scents I've ever smelled. Um, and juniper berry is used to sort of freshen up, um, freshen up gin. And um, it has this very... Um, sprightly, you know, fizzy. Um, sometimes even you can have this very pungent, sometimes it turns a little bit green, but I find it very refreshing, very invigorating. And that's what you get from this. Um, there is a little bit of a pepperiness to this scent, peppery, musky, but um, also citrusy. But man, that juniper berry is just spot on for the heat. It is absolutely spot on for the heat. And again, this is a lot of these um, these creeds, they smell the best when it's very, very hot. So when it's 100 degrees here in Texas, you reach for something like Royal Water or something like Arafa. It just fits perfect for those type of days. It is very fresh. And so a lot of frag heads have a problem with freshness because they're just not interesting. You know, that's part of the issue is a lot of these summer scents, these warm weather scents, they're just boring. They... Um, Many frag heads prefer the heavier, deeper, darker, more challenging, and I and I definitely fall into this boat. But and I and one thing I, I will say as well is is that I wear whatever I want. So whatever I want, when I want, if I want to wear the regular Antaeus, guess what? I'll wear it. If I want to wear the regular Koros, I'll wear it. If I want to wear Bellamy, even it's if it's hot, I'll wear it. But if I want to be season specific, that's where more of this list tends to come in. But I must say, when it's 100 degrees and you apply something like Royal Water and it just hits the spot perfectly, like, you know, you were made to wear this scent today, there is nothing better on a very hot day. It's so refreshing. And um, yeah, I love it. Sometimes I just absolutely love wearing stuff like this. Very rarely, but there are days where I just want to reach for something like this and, and this is definitely high on the list. Okay. So, those four creeds are done. Next, we're going to go to the house of Dolce & Gabbana. Dolce & Gabbana has two main scents. Two main scents that I like to reach for in the heat. One is probably the best tobacco fragrance for the heat, in my opinion. Uh, you do have to try to get the vintage bottle, in my opinion, if you're going to go for this. Obviously, um, you are the king or queen of your own finances. You have to decide what you can and can't buy. If you're going to go for this scent, go for the vintage. Don't get the new one. Uh, this is Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme with the cheap little sticker on the front. And I literally had to tape it on because it kept falling off. But uh, Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme, you want the made in Italy version. Okay? You want the made in Italy version. And this is old school Italian... Um, Probably one of the one of my favorite tobacco fragrances for the heat. Okay, you get posh lavender, you get old school tarragon, which gives a little bit of that anise-like quality. There's cardamom, there's pepper. Again, there's three citrus notes in the top: bergamot, mandarin orange, and orange. And it dries down to this um, tobacco, cedar, tonka bean, and then the secret ingredient, uh, which is iris. And iris is always sort of the secret ingredient. So imagine sort of the, um, imagine the journey with this scent, okay? So it starts off citrusy, very Italian feeling to me for some reason. Very Italian. And then it sort of turns earthy. And that earthiness is blended. The earthiness comes from the tarragon, which is anisic and um, some slightly licorice even sometimes. The cardamom, which is, can be very cooling. And the sage can have a very earthy type aroma as well with this pepper and lavender. The lavender is very traditionally masculine, very posh. This is a very dressed up, buttoned up scent for me. And um, then it hits you with the woods in the base and that tobacco. And the, the tobacco note is absolutely one of the best 
fresh tobaccos I've ever smelled. If I am if I'm craving tobacco in the heat, this is what I want to reach for. I would reach for this over something like Roger and Galay Open, which also could have been on this list, by the way. Uh, but that iris note, I mean, obviously a lot of people are are wearing this for that tobacco, but the iris is uh, for me, man. It is. Uh, it just takes it to another level. I think this is why this fragrance turned into such a cult classic and why so many people were so upset um, whenever they reformulated it and did a bad job. So it's just my opinion. Okay, 1995, Dana, the House of Dana released this aquatic, synthetic aquatic is what, is what Parfumo says. And they're right, it is a synthetic aquatic. But you know what? This is a good fragrance. For $10, uh, this, is a, this is a buy. It's discontinued. And the bottles that you actually get, if you get them from where I got this one, which is fragrancebuy.ca. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. Just telling you my experience. Uh, it was a vintage bottle with a short ingredient list. This is called Navy for men. So this is probably the kind of stuff that you guys expected to see on this video, right? This is Navy for men. And Navy for men is lavender, sage, and tangerine with geranium, nutmeg, and water mint with fujian cypress musk and sandalwood and you know what even though this is an aquatic even though it's a synthetic it does not smell cheap there's one we're going to talk about very soon which smells very cheap this was not one of them this is a i'm not going to say fantastic but this is definitely worth if you're into the you know discontinued vintage aquatics let's say try this do not overlook this because it's 10 bucks you might be really surprised and i got a 100 mil bottle it was a 100 mil bottle for like 12 bucks or something yeah, um, good stuff. I mean, I think it's technically, it almost feels like it's a fougere. You know, it feels like it has that structure to it, but then sometimes it it, it does give off that uh, aquatic-like vibe. But, I, you know, definitely something I need to wear more. I've only worn it to bed a few times, but uh, very good stuff. Okay, now the one I was talking about earlier, Dior's Eau Sauvage. Obviously, this has to be on the list from 1966. This is summer scent. This is a summer scent to me. This is a 20-year-old bottle. This came out in 2003. Or, sorry, this bottle is from 2003. The scent came out in 1966. And it's lemon, bergamot, basil, lavender, rosemary, cumin, and fruity notes. I don't get very much cumin, though. Carnation, jasmine, sandalwood, coriander, orris root, patchouli, and rose with uh, oak moss, musk, vetiver, and amber. And... You know, it's that fresher, slightly dirty citrus thing. It's, I mean, it's not bad. Um, obviously, there's some aromatic facets to it. It has that cologne feel. You can just reapply this every two or three hours, and that's sort of how I wear it. I mean, you can see I've made a slight dent in this bad boy, but, and this is a 200 mil bottle, um, but it's, you know, I, I never fell in love with this. Maybe if I found a bottle from the 80s or something like that, uh, I'm just worried because it's a citrus, and citruses do tend to turn faster. Okay, now here's one that does not get much love, but this is a perfect summer masculine to wear. It's fresh, it's green, probably one of the best fig fragrances in my collection. Came out in 1997. It's also a Dior, and this is called Dior Dune Pour Homme. Now, rumors are this is being potentially discontinued. Um, Parfumo says it's still... Uh, being marketed by LVMH, but I I don't know how long it's if it's still being marketed. It feels like it's on its last year or two. Um, just my just my feeling. I don't know if that's true or not. But this is an older bottle. You can tell because it says Christian Dior instead of just Dior. So that's one way to tell. Um, and I got this from Le Parfumé, I believe. Um, so this is fig leaf, currant leaf, basil and sage, fig tree bark, rose and um, Rosetta with cedarwood, sandalwood, tonka bean, and vanilla. And this is another one that um, you can just kind of reapply every couple hours, two, three, four hours if you would like. The fig adds this um, sort of, uh, rumor has it that fig is a comforting and calming smell for people, is... is um, is what I've heard that it has this warm sort of um, earthy sweetness about it and um, that they use it in things like aromatherapy and, and stuff like that. But for me, 
it sort of has this milky facet to it. Figs always have this slightly milky-like facet to them. And um, green, you know, the imagine smelling like the, the uh, fig leaf itself, right? So I think there's a little bit of both. I think there's fig and fig leaf is my guess because I do get a slight milkiness from this. Green, imagine like crushing a fig. Uh, and sort of releasing some of the greener aspects of it with the with the current and basil. Um, very good summer scent. I think this is a great summer scent that you can just sort of, if you just feel like spraying away, uh, Dune, Dune Pour Homme is great for that. Okay, now here's a newer one to the collection. Um, and I have to give a special shout out to Armando for sending this my way. And I've worn it to bed a couple times. This one may seem a little too heavy for some people. For me, I would have no problem wearing this. This is a proper fougere, um, and it's called Turbo. So this is called Turbo for men. So fougeres to me, I like to wear in the summer, in the heat. And there's some more fougeres coming up. But um, this is bergamot, lavender, anise, cumin, petit gras, and rosemary. Now this is 1982. So this is going to seem more old school than some of the aquatics we've been talking about. But sometimes in the summer, I don't want an aquatic. I want something like this. I want a vintage scent. But I still want it to be somewhat proper, right? You don't want to wear something like, um, I don't know, uh, Amber Narguilé or, uh, you know, Russian Oud or something like that in the, in the dead of summer. I mean, you probably could wear both of those, but I don't think they're season specific, right? I think about fougeres as still being season specific. I like to wear them in, in the summers. So there's cedar and clove, geranium, marjoram, patchouli, and pepper with ambergris, leather, moss, musk, and tonka bean. And this does have this old school, almost like, um, almost a little bit of this Dracar Noir. Not exactly, but almost a little bit of this Dracar Noir. And what's very interesting about that comparison to me is they both came out in the year 1982. So you can see, even though this is now discontinued and Dracar is still going strong, you can sort of, whenever two fragrances come out in the same year and they have similarities, you can probably guess that the houses were um, reading the same tea leaves, if you will. But this is fantastic. I, I think this is probably better than Dracar Noir, to be honest with you. Um, so, so yes, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Turbo. So thanks to Armando for sending this my way, and I will obviously be talking about it more on the channel. Okay, now, earlier when I talked about, um, I talked about fragrances for the different categories. One of them was green fragrances, and, sorry about that. Um, okay, so one of them is green fragrances, and this is one that gets overlooked because it is officially discontinued, according to Parfumo, very sadly, as is its counterpart, which was a, a bestseller. Um, Jeffrey Bean um, discontinued their best masculine sense, in my opinion. Uh, but this one right here is called Bowling Green. And the reason that this one basically makes the list is that sometimes in summer, you want something that's going to um, remind you of the green grass, of the, um, the green leaves on the trees that are out, right, in, in the heart of summer. Uh, slight pine touch to this. Also juniper and basil. It's very green. There's actually a lot of green touches to this. It's lemony. There's basil, bergamot, juniper, artemisia, pine, uh, fir, oak moss, lot of green with lavender, cinnamon, amber, patchouli, and sandalwood. And um, everything in this, um, this smells, by the way, if you can see the bottom, distributed by Jacqueline Cochran. Uh, Jacqueline Cochran. She, um, I think, was a Canadian. I can't, can't remember the story. Anuj told me about the distribution channel from her, uh, from her company. But... Um, Basically, she stopped distributing, I think, in the 80s, he, he, he said. So that's a way to date the bottles. If you see distributed by Jacqueline Cochran, you know that uh, it's, it's basically an 80s bottle. Um, so this is probably one of the original bottles from 87, 88, 89. 
Um, this is the cologne spray version, and it is fantastic. Um, it is fantastic. Again, sad that this is discontinued, but um, if you are a fan of green scents and you like fougeres, because this is a um, this is a proper fougere as well, put this on the put this on the to sniff list. Okay, next on the list, we are going to go to the house of Giorgio Beverly Hills, and uh, Giorgio Beverly Hills has a new fragrance that I just bought this for new to my collection, not new. It came out in 1994, but it's new to my collection and it's called Wings for Men for those heavy flow days. Uh, Wings for Men, terrible name. But uh, you know what? This is this is a alternative to something like Polo Sport, which is coming up very soon. And um, I haven't been telling you to put asterisks next to the, you know, super summery ones, but... Uh, if you are, this definitely could be one to put an asterisk next to. It reminds me, the bottle reminds me a little bit of the Nautica bottle. Remember the original Nautica bottle, that coloring? That's sort of what the bottle feels like from Giorgio Beverly Hills. Um, it is extremely synthetic though. So where I was telling you earlier that Dana's Navy for men is, um, you know, it smells somewhat natural and definitely worth the money. This one, it's not that I don't think it's worth the money. I just think it's very very synthetic and um that syntheticness sort of turns me off a little bit uh it's harder for me to like this also it has this cheaper smelling neroli which can sometimes come across as laundered like fresh laundry um laundry soap and i don't always want to smell like that from my fragrance but once it settles if you give it half an hour or an hour it does settle into something respectable with some geranium Clary sage, coriander, jasmine, tonka bean, cedar, oak moss, amber, and musk. But um, but yeah, that uh, that synthetic opening is a little tough in Wings for Men. But I'll, it is discontinued, and it's from 1994, uh, so it's right as that aquatic wave was coming. So I'll, I'll talk about it on the on the channel one day. Okay, next on the list is um, some Givenchy's, and I have absolutely fallen in love with this line. This is Monsieur de Givenchy. And my favorite, Monsieur de Givenchy Haut Concentration. So these two, man, I'll tell you what, they are absolutely, um, I mentioned earlier when we talked about Chanel's Pour Monsieur, that this type of style of, of almost um, citrusy, uh, chipra, cip citrusy aromatic style chipras are not my favorite, and they're not. But um, this came out, a couple years after Chanel's Pour Monsieur. And this came out, I think, maybe even a decade after the original Monsieur de Givenchy. I don't know when the Haut Concentration came out, but man, they um, they absolutely nailed this style. It's lemony, that carnation note. This is one of the best, the Haut Concentration and is one of the best takes on carnation I've ever smelled. It's up there with, uh, Abbey Rouge. I mean, it's that good. That lemon carnation. So think of sort of the Abbey Rouge lemon carnation combo that's so beautiful. But instead of going down the rosewood and guerlainade with vanilla like Abbey Rouge does, this goes down the lemon vervain, lavender, oak moss, musk, sandalwood, and it's slightly peppery. But God, what a fragrance, man. I am in love with... Uh, Monsieur, this is still a good fragrance. It's just nowhere near as good as the Haut Concentration. Okay, sticking with the house of Givenchy. Um, this is Ensense. And Ensense is a masculine floral, as they say. It came out in 1993. Uh, Mandarin orange, basil, and black currant. So it is slightly fruity as well with Lily of the Valley, Magnolia, Mastic, which Mastic has this almost chewed on quality. Imagine... Um, you know, imagine it being slightly chewy with iris and fir balsam. And um, this is, I think you can find bottles of this on fragrancebuy.ca still for 60 bucks. Worth it for that, okay? Don't pay 100, 200 bucks for this. It's not worth it. Um, it is, it's just not, it's not worth it. It's a good fragrance. It's a good floral, fresh green sort of fragrance, but it's not, it's not some rare unicorn to go pay hundreds for it. Not, not in my opinion. Um, okay, next on the list is going to be a Parfums Grey fragrance. And this is a Gerard Anthony of Fermaniche. This is fantastic stuff, by the way. Probably backup bottle worthy. This is 
Ohm de Grey. I love this stuff. It's like a... The sandalwood in that is just unbelievable with neroli, and it's almost like this uh, oak mossy, citrusy, spicy, slightly even fruity. I think there's a peach note in here, but um, man, it's good. Citruses came out in 1996. There was an original version of this from decades and decades ago that I've never smelled, but this version from Gerard Anthony for the summer, I mean, this is what... I would think people wore in the mid 90s that were pissed off at stuff like this coming out. You know, uh, they wore stuff like this. And um, so, yeah, on those days where you're just pissed off at stuff like this, this is what you reach for. This is just Gerard Anthony, just given the fragrance industry in the 90s the backhand. Okay, next on the list, we've got some uh, Guerlain's. Actually, I lied. We've got some Gucci's first. So, um, first we're going to do a fragrance called Gucci Pour Homme. Now, this particular version is the one from 1976, and it is long discontinued. Uh, Guy Robert is the perfumer of this, and it is basically um, exactly what I mentioned earlier with uh, Chanel's Pour Monsieur, or... Uh, Monsieur de Givenchy, or even I mentioned Capucci Porol. Maybe I'll just add this in the damn video because this could also be in the video. It's of that style, okay? So this is of that style, but I think they've improved upon it uh, because by this time, YSL Porol had already come out. There's all these other factors that played into it. So Gucci had a little bit of a competitive advantage because all the other houses had already sort of, uh, they had they had fired their bullet. They've taken their shot. And so Gucci came in and decided to take that DNA and make it spicier, make it thicker, make it more resinous. It still has that woody, spicy, citrusy, lemony, you know, um, proper citrus aromatic sheepra. I don't know even what the technical term is for this type of sheepra. It's not my favorite, but I'll tell you what, this is a very good representation Um of this of its genre let's say uh, there's a lot of and maybe the reason why I like this one so much is there's a lot of labdanum and leather it feels like it's a very similar thing that uh, the Haut concentration version of Monsieur de Givenchy did but I I don't know because the note listing on on Monsieur de Givenchy shows the same on both uh, but this one I know they've added leather and vanilla and labdanum and it, and they've just you know a little ambery they just they they made it a little more to my liking um so gucci porom the original not gucci porom one from 2003 gucci porom the original from 1976 and then sticking with gucci i told you i like to wear fougeres in the heat right and here you go this is a proper fougere many consider this the best fougere of all time uh this is gucci nobile and Gucci Nobile is, um, well, it's a green spicy fougere. It's got bergamot, lavender, mace, rosemary, lemon, tarragon, um, and tons of green notes, furs and, and carnation, old school carnation, oak moss, uh, and sandalwood, amber, cedar, patchouli, tonka, vetiver, musk, and the hidden ingredient here that's not listed, hands down, I can smell it as a tobacco note. There is this dry tobacco note in this that I think is why many people sort of put this over the top. They 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 put this, um, you know, above other fougeres of its genres. They always consider this one step above. And that execution of the tobacco, even though it's not listed, is, uh, I think, what sort of gives this the edge in many competitions. But um, Gucci Nobile, 1988, discontinued. It was last marketed by Scannon. It is highly, highly sought after. But I'll, I'll I'll tell you this. Don't pay huge money for this. I mean, if you can't find this and you just want to kind of get in the ballpark, go buy Rogue's Ball Monsieur for 100 bucks. Don't pay. I've seen these for six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900 on eBay. Don't pay that. Absolutely do not reward that type of behavior. Okay, next on the list we have uh, some Guerlain's. And so we're going to start with an Eau de Cologne because sometimes I do want to wear a Mitsuko, but maybe the EDP or the X-Tray is just a little too much. So this is what I reach for in the heat. This is Guerlain's Mitsuko Eau de Cologne. 
So the Eau de Cologne, uh, this is what they call the clock face bottle for reasons that are self-explanatory. Um, but this is basically everything the other Mitsukos are. Oh, oh man, Mitsuko, fuck. Oh, it is, um, I just, I can't help myself. That deserved a fuck. I mean, this is one of the greatest, I mean, these right here, uh, stuff, holding stuff like this in my hand, these, these Mitsukos, it's like you're holding the greatest fragrance, uh, just a absolute reference of a Shepra. And so you can see how, look how dark the juice is of the Parfum de Toilette. And you can see the Eau de Cologne. Um, darkness of juice doesn't always represent how thick the fragrance is. But in this scenario, it's a good example of the differences. This just wears a little more ethereal. Um, you get a little ambergris in the base. and But it has that Guerlain quality. My God, man. Um... I absolutely love Mitsuko. I am in love with Mitsuko. I'm in love with Shalimar, Mitsuko. I mean, very few houses do feminine fragrances. Even the extra of uh, Val de Nui is like, it blows my mind. Um, I love the way that Guerlain does those old feminine fragrances. Okay, now from 1951, one of the greatest masculines ever made. This is Vetiver by Guerlain. This bottle is discontinued. This is one of the best bottles ever created. Each one of these is supposed to represent a different time in a man's life. And um, the only reason why people might not want to wear this in the heat is there's this tobacco note that comes out. I have no problem. Absolutely no problem. This is the greatest vetiver fragrance ever made. I mean, there, I said it. Uh, it's it's bergamot, lemon, mandarin, uh, neroli, coriander, vet, vetiver, cedarwood, tobacco, nutmeg, pepper, tonka bean, and uh, capiscum. I'm not familiar with that note. Capiscum. But, um, but yes, I mean, um, I think this is the relaunched bottle that they did in 2000. Because the original came out in 1959. Then they changed a couple bottles. They discontinued it. My, my good friend Rich Mitch uh, from across the pond has a fragrance called Guerlain Vetiver through the years or something. Uh, something like that. Look, look up Guerlain Vetiver and go to Rich Mitch's channel. You'll find the, the video where he shows his different bottles of Vetiver throughout the years. It's fantastic. But... Uh, I love this fragrance, even though when you sm when you spray it uh, in the heat, it gives off sort of this cut grass. It's very fresh cut grass, which is what vetiver is. Vetiver is a type of grass, but they use the oil from the roots. They don't use the actual cut grass unless you're Creed. Creed says they do. Um, they say they use all three parts of the vetiver. Um, but this is, I mean, if you're a vetiver lover, you're in heaven. You're drooling over Guerlain's Vetiver. It is that good. And if you don't think it's that good, keep wearing it until it clicks, because it will. It'll click. It's one of those fragrances where you'll write it off, you'll think it's too old smelling for you, or too, you know, ah, oh, you just can't wear that kind of stuff. Too working man, too, you know, uh, I think of a man with like calluses on his hands wearing that, right? Uh, and the more you wear it, the more you realize it is absolutely timeless. Okay, staying with Guerlain, here's one that does not get much talk, but it's perfect for the summer. And this is a flanker of Samsara, one of the greatest sandalwood fragrances of all time. This is called Un Air de Samsara. And so this is a, you can see that the notes are actually on the back. Dominant notes, fresh notes, jasmine, and sandalwood. Fresh notes. Well, the fresh note, I'll tell you what it is. It's uh, mint. So they've added mint uh, jasmine sandalwood. This came out in 1995, so there's probably still real Mysore sandalwood in this. Didn't last long. I think this was a one-run fragrance, and then they discontinued it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I'll tell you what, Un Air de Samsara, don't worry that it's marketed towards women. It is 100% completely unisex. Again, like I said about some of those other feminine targeted fragrances like Val de Nuit, which could easily have been on this list. But I decided to give some love to Un Air de Samsara. It deserves it. Honestly, it does. It is um, so good. So, so good. Uh, and in the heat, that mint just shines. You wouldn't think that a mint note with Samsara would work, but it does. Okay, uh, going back to the year 1982, uh, we are going to talk about the, 
the, again, one of the best selling fragrances of all time, one of my favorite perfumers of all time, Pierre Wargnay. This is Dracar Noir. So Dracar Noir is uh, obviously where Pierre Ward and I took that dihydromercenol note and just cranked it up. I mean, it was used in things like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, which is coming up from 73, but it wasn't really amped up to the level that they amped it up in Dracar Noir. That, uh, Dracar Noir is technically a fougere, and they, um, they took that, uh, that dihydromercenol note and just turned it up to a 11 or whatever it is. And, uh, you, you can definitely feel that that dihydromercenol freshness, but there's also lavender, artemisia, lemon vervain, rosemary, lemon, basil, bergamot, coriander, juniper, carnation, jasmine, cinnamon, oak moss, cedarwood, fir, leather, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, and amber. And um, I mean, this is the 80s for most people. This is what a lot of folks wore in the 80s. Uh, but even though I enjoy wearing this in the heat, I like wearing my fougeres in the heat, there is a fragrance that uh, I think actually fits this video a little bit better and it's from the same house it's for, and look at the bottle i mean it looks like a aquatic dracar noir bottle and um this is called horizon so don't let this aquatic bottle fool you okay yes there are some aquatic tendencies but there are also a lot of green um there's stuff like bay leaf and galbanum and artemisia and fennel uh and mint Oak moss, a lot of uh, 80s type notes in here. This is almost like an aquatic fragrance by a house that didn't want to let go of the 80s. Uh, and so for someone like me that loves the 80s, my favorite decade, uh, this is, this and, and this is a Cosmere bottle. And there was like a sale going on at one of the discounters. I got like five bottles of this for like 20 bucks, all five. It was like five bucks a piece or something. It was an insanity, $7 a piece or something crazy. Um, okay, now one of my favorite sport fragrances of all time, I already showed you Antea Sport, and this is Boss Sport. Now, if Antea Sport is just too much and you want more of a traditional vintage sport fragrance, this is the one to go with. This is absolutely the one to go with. There's some more sport fragrances coming up too, by the way, but... Um, this is the most traditional, fresh, spicy. It's got this uh, marigold note in the top, which uh, adds this slight um, crinkly hay-like feel to the fragrance, but it's surrounded by so many other notes. Uh, it also feels like a fougere in a, in a sense. It's got mugwort, juniper berry, geranium, tarragon, carnation, clary sage, mace rose, jasmine lily, cedar patchouli, amber moss, moss sandalwood, and tonka bean. Uh, with some citruses in the top, lemon, mandarin, orange, and bergamot. And I actually sent like six fragrances to Armando, some samples to, to test. And I asked him which one was his favorite. It was this. It was Boss Sport. And I sent him some Hall of Fame fragrances. Um, Boss Sport was Boss Sport was the winner. And it should be. This is one of the most underrated um, sport scents. And don't worry about the whole red cap versus black cap. Get whatever you can get. Whatever you can get, they're both amazing. I think it's the same run even, Anuj said, that this was a one-run fragrance. Okay, next on the list is the Hermes. And again, just like I mentioned with the Creed, the um, Royal English Leather, sometimes I want to wear a leather fragrance in the heat. This is what I like to wear in the heat. This is O de Hermes. Um, this is the Flacon. I've shown this before, um, but this works amazing in the heat. Even though it's a spicy animalic leather, birch, birch and leather, I just think it works fan on my skin. That lavender, that red hot cinnamony um, spiciness, clover and, and cardamom in the top, they just work perfectly on my skin. So Eau de Hermes for me, even though you can wear this, this is an all year fragrance, but it definitely works in the heat. Uh, okay, next on the list, we are going to go to uh, Jacques Fat Fragrance. And this is a traditional summer fragrance. This is called Green Water. And Green Water... Um, is known famous in the industry for one thing, and that is the largest amount of Narrowly ever used in a fragrance. Uh, Narrowly is an extremely expensive ingredient, and uh, so this is discontinued. They've uh, since tried to recreate it, but the formula is obviously different, uh, with lots of citruses. So there's lemon, bergamot, 
uh, orange, petit grand, basil, clary, sage, lavender, rose, tonka, and musk. And this is the original from, um, uh, this is the original version of this style of fragrance to my mind. Now Creed tried to copy uh, this style of fragrance with a fragrance from the 70s called Selection Vert, which I only have a decant of, but uh, you could kind of go either or. They both could be in this video. I'll, I'll, I'll put both in the, in the little list for you guys. Um, but yeah, Selection Vert or Green Water fit, fit this DNA for the, for the heat. And again, the hotter, the better with Green Water. Okay, next on the list is a uh, Jean Patou fragrance. And this is a very interesting fragrance for this video because this fragrance was made for this video. This is called Voyageur. And this came out in 1994. You can see, look at the copyright, 1994. Um, and what's interesting about this scent is um, Jean Carlio was the in was the perfumer, and um, this is a sort of uh, they call this an aquatic fragrance, right? Look at the marketing and all that stuff. But in a nutshell, the owners of um, Jean Patou were at many many points throughout the early 90s sort of nicely asking Jean Carlio to do a um uh a aquatic because that that was that's what was all the rage I can't talk today I'm sorry and um he continued to refuse because Jean Carlio liked to make traditional fine french perfumery as it's called okay he liked to do heavy sandalwood, real Mysore, lots of oak moss, you know, and that's what endears him to vintage lovers like myself nowadays. That's why bottles of Jean Petou Poirot go for $1,000 or, or more on eBay. Um, and he didn't want to do an aquatic. He thought it was beneath him and beneath the brand, but they insisted. They kept asking. They wouldn't go away. S pretty soon they stopped asking and they started telling him, you're going to make an aquatic. And so he put out this and then he retired right afterwards. Uh, and what's so interesting about Voyageur is you get this, I don't know what you would call it, Calone thing, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, you get it, 20 minutes tops, and then it disappears. And it turns into this earthy, lavender, woody, sage, cedarwood, oak moss, and sandalwood, traditional fine French perfumery. He took his style of fragrance that people pay $1,000 for in Patou Pour Homme, and he added a little bit of extra grapefruit and orange and uh, calone and, you know, aquatic materials in the top and just built it on top of his structure that people pay a thousand bucks for. There's real Mysore sandalwood in this. I got this for 40 bucks. This is one of the best aquatics in my collection for me, for a vintage lover. Uh, and in the heat, it smells amazing. Yeah, I mean, if you'd find this like I did for 40 or 50 bucks, it is a no brainer absolute no-brainer. Okay, enough of that. Next on the list, we have a newer fragrance, but I've worn it a couple times to bed. I think it'll work great in the heat. This is Jill Sander Man 3. So most of the Jill Sanders Mans, I think would be probably cooler that I've smelled, like Man Pure, which I have a video on, or Man 1, Man 2. But this one in particular, there's this freshness to it because Pierre Bourdon did it. So he did it in 87, the same year I think that Cool Water came out. He put out this for Jill Sander, and I was worried I wasn't going to like it because of the style. It's compared to Caesar's Man, which could also be on this list, but I decided to go with this instead. But uh, Caesar's Man is a scent that I've talked about on the channel. It's got that dihydromercenol Dracar DNA to it, but I like what Pierre Bourdon did here because he uh, used this fruitiness. And of course, he would train his pupils to use fruits in fragrances as well, which would ultimately uh, end in... Uh, Jean-Christophe Herreau creating Aventus with that pineapple fruity top that he learned from his teacher, Pierre Bourdon. And, but there's this, there's a strength to the base. It's mossy and woody and patchouli and, but I think this could easily be worn in summer. Beautiful, green, fresh, spicy fragrance. Love it. And if you love Pierre Bourdon's work, you'll like that. Okay, next on the list is probably one of the best tomato leaf fragrances. Tomato leaf is a note that I like to wear in the heat as well. And um, so this is green and fresh, perfect for the heat, uh, even the color of the juice. I mean, this is uh, a, a scent from the house of Yop, and this is called What About Adam? So What About Adam is tomato leaf, blackcurrant, grapefruit, citrus, mint, 
cedarwood, geranium, lavender, sandalwood, uh, vanilla, vetiver. There's a little bit of labdanum. Um, and basically, it adds this uh, very green sort of um, tart, almost... Um, almost uh, tomato leaf has this strangeness to it, actually. It's, it almost smells viney, in a way, uh, is the way that it's described. So there's this viney smell to the tomato leaf. Very unique. Very, I think of like salty, earthy, grassy, musky, salty, uh, bitter. Uh, very bitter. Bitter is a good word for it. Um, it really feels like there's a lot of a lot of freshness and but fresh like plants growing. You know that's what the tomato tomato leaf. Um, it makes it makes the fragrance feel like a plant is like emanating from that scent. You know it's um it's very interesting. You wouldn't think tomato leaf in a fragrance would work, but I'll tell you what. Again, in the heat, um, this is this is divine, and no one smells like this. I mean, you're gonna smell completely different from everyone else wearing whatever the hell they're wearing in the heat. Probably Sauvage, which uh, Ambroxan in the heat smells like shit. To be honest with you, to me, um, big Ambroxan bombs, even though. It's a blue fragrance. I don't like the way that they come off in the high heat. I'd much rather wear some of these. Okay, next on the list is going to be a Lacoste. This is the original, called Lacoste original, from 1984. Um, you want to look for the older bottles that say Sofa Par on them. Don't buy the uh, Procter & Gamble, in my opinion. I wouldn't go for that. But this is fresh and green. Lavender, bergamot, lime, clary sage, lemon, basil, galbanum, oak moss. This is a fragrance that, I mean, look at the green right? This is a country club fragrance. This is a golf fragrance. This is a tennis fragrance. This is a sport fragrance, basically. Even though it doesn't say sport, it's like wearing a sport fragrance. Okay, next on the list is going to be a L'Envent. And I have to give a shout out to my good perfume god person that sent this to me. Very generous decant of a very hard to find fragrance from 1964 called Figaro. And Figaro is cit citrus, lavender, there's this greenness to it. Again, fresh, barbershop almost, clary sage, cedar wood, a little bit of uh, almost like shaving foam feel. But there's this L'Envon civet, and they used it in Monsieur L'Envon, and it's one of the best executions of civet in the 1960s. Um, this is much more toned down, but it's still there. But that's what makes it so interesting, is um, that citrusy, barbershoppy, lavender... Um, with just a little bit of that animalic civet. It is uh, beautiful for the heat. Love it. Uh, Figaro. I'll do a video on that one day. Okay, next on the list is probably one of the best lemons I've smelled. Shout out to Rich Mitch for this. This is uh, Loewe Por Homme. And this isn't even the Para Homme. This isn't even the Para Hombre version, which came out in 1974. And I can't imagine how good that one smells. I, I, I would love a bottle of it, but it's impossible to find. Um, this doesn't have the cardamom of the Pata Hombre version, and, um, they've changed, I think they've changed a couple things, uh, the ingredients obviously are sourced differently, so they re-released it in 1992, so this is technically a 1992 release, but you could date this fragrance's origin all the way back to 1974. So Loewe Por Homme. And it's it's literally one of the best lemons I've ever smelled. The lemony opening of this is absolutely outrageous. Shout out to Rich Mitch. It's a lemony, citrusy, spicy, green, lavender. Lemon and lavender. I mean, uh, with sandalwood in the base. What more can you ask for? For the heat, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's a perfect heat. High heat fragrance. Okay, next on the list, we are going to go to, I mentioned uh, whenever we were talking about Aralfa by Creed that I would tell you which um, fragrance Edmund Rudnitska created that I think Aralfa by uh, Creed from 1992 draws a little bit from. And it's this. This is Ocean Rain by Mario Valentino. This is one of the most insane aquatics I've ever smelled. But it has this, uh, you know what it smells like? It smells like an old Dior fragrance. It smells like uh, Edmund Rudnitska 
decided to bring back some of the old Dior fragrances. He was making it in the 60s and 70s for Dior, um, but make it in an aquatic style. It's, it's spicy, there's floral elements, and the marine notes or the marine elements in here almost have this antiseptic vibe about the aquatic bits. Uh, you can almost see the, the back of the bottle makes it look like there's a sunrise coming over the water. This is a Pierre Denand bottle. The um, Pierre Denand is like the goat of bottle creations. So cyclamen, rose, basil, amber, cedar, frankincense, leather. There's even a leather note in the dry down. Um, but it is... Uh, um, trying to see if there was a blurb on it. Yeah, no, I can't see the blurb. It's probably on the packaging. I bet you I have it. I just don't. It's up in the attic. Uh, but yes, if you want an interesting aquatic Mario Valentino, uh, ocean rain for men is definitely interesting. Okay, next on the list, we have a Nicolai Parf Parfumer, and this is called Cologne Salone, one of the best just you can go buy. And now, this is an older bottle, so I don't know what the new version is like, but um, if you just want to go buy a citrusy, fresh cologne that sort of takes this DNA and modernizes it, even though this is from 1989, it still feels very modern. Lavender, orange blossom, lemon, bergamot, orange, rosemary, benzoin, musk, and patchouli. It's just, you just want to spray a cologne that just smells fantastic for three or four hours. There you go. Um, cologne Salone. Okay, next on the list is uh, Nina Cheruti. And this is Nino Cheruti Porom from 1979. Now, earlier I mentioned En Sense. So the reason that this always kind of gets push to the back burner for me is because this is such a superior version of this. So this is obviously taking notes from Nino Ciruti Porom, but I think Nino Ciruti Porom just does everything that it does better. It also has more of those traditionally masculine notes. Um, so there's like stone pine needles and thyme and fir. Um, they didn't shy away from them, whereas Ensense really tried to go more modern and floral and stuff like that. And there's still floral bits in here, but... Um, yeah, Nino Ciruti Pour Homme in the heat. For me, this is a warm weather fragrance. Although I know some people love wearing it in the cold, I love wearing Nino Ciruti Pour Homme in the heat. And then, you know, you haven't seen anything like Heritage or Zeno, that kind of style, Escada Pour Homme. I left all those out, but I'm going to include this because I think this would work. Even though it's a spicy, citrusy fragrance, I think this is like the godfather, the grandfather of that style. It turned into Zeno and uh, Eigner Fair Play and all. I love that DNA, but this is sort of the original, um, called Nino Ciruti Fair Play. What was Eigner's? Free Life. Eigner's was Free Life, excuse me. And this is lavender, lemon, bergamot, lime, mandarin, orange, basil, carnation, geranium, pine, amber, cedarwood, leather, moss, tonka, and vanilla. But I think there's just something, God, the way Nino Ciruti blended their scents back in the day. Wow. Wow. Um, I love that stuff. Probably my favorite, Nino Ciruti. Okay, I've talked about this one a lot recently, but it deserves the love. It's Oscar by Oscar De La Renta. For the heat, this is really the... Um, it's so citrusy and peppery and spicy. It's got clove and violet leaf and, and a little bit of like uh, leathery sandalwood frankincense in the base but it's really about that citrusy, peppery pop. This is a very energetic fragrance is the way I would describe it. Very good. Uh, came out in 1999, right at the end of our cutoff to be in the video. But uh, man, what a fragrance. Oscar for Men by Oscar de la Renta. Okay, next on the list is an Otto Kern fragrance, which does not get the love it deserves. Um, this is called Cycle for Men. This absolutely deserves love, uh, especially in the, in the heat. It's a very bitter, tart, uh, almost like it'll make your mouth pucker. You know, it's got that extreme bitterness to it. If you're someone that does not like sweet fragrances like me, this is your this is your savior. I mean, this comes and just smacks all those sweet fragrances away. Green, minty, there's black currant leaf, which can come across as uh, very bitter, tart. Um, 
and I lots of citruses in cycle. But uh, yeah, come devoid of sweetness. There is not a sweet note in cycle. Okay, now we have Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. And if you want to really be specific, go with Sport to Paco Rabanne. But I had to include the original because this is a barbershop scent. So even though the original is heavier, it has a little bit of this animalic honey. I have no problem wearing the original Paco Rabanne in the heat. But if you wanted to be summer specific, go with Sport to Paco Rabanne. It just, um, it adds more of the lemons and bergamots and uh, there's a little bit of iris in this too. So they've added, they've added some extra touches here, but they kept sort of the oak moss and the cedar wood and the patchouli and all that good stuff. And um, there's no honey though. I don't think there's honey. I think they completely removed the honey. Um, but yes, Sport to Paco Rabanne if you want to be season specific, or you could just go with the OG Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Okay, we're down to the final few. So here's one I wanted to highlight, and you might be a little surprised by this, but this is a Pierre Bourdon, fra uh, sorry, it's a Pierre Cardin fragrance, and this is called Centaur, but this particular one is called Diamant Noir. Diamant Noir. And you would think, wow, this is a dark bottle. Isn't this going to be a dark fragrance? Well, Believe it or not, I have the whole set, and I'm going to talk about it. I've got I've got the entire set. We're going to do a video on that one day, but um, I have the blue one as well. And you may think, you may think that the blue one is actually the aquatic one to, to buy, right? Um, and that's how I actually went in when I never smelled them. Um, I went in thinking, wow, I bet you this blue one's going to be aquatic-like. Eh. This is actually um, frankincense, clove, labdanum. Virginia cedar, patchouli, sandalwood, styrax, vanilla. There's a ton of heavy notes in here. Uh, nutmeg. Uh, there is lavender as well, but there is nothing aquatic about uh, centaur. Queer cask. Uh, queer cassake is what this one's called. But for some reason, in the heat, this one, the, the Diamant Noir, it just shines uh, it's citrusy, it's green, there's a lot of oak moss, but um, it's also woody, it's very woody, but that citrusy, it's like a citrus green wood, basically, is what it smells like. Man, I mean, in the quality of these scents, I, I'm blown away, but this is Pierre Cardin. Um, absolutely blown away, and as a collector's item, how damn cool are these? Uh, okay, so we'll talk about the whole set one day. All right, next on the list, we've got one of the icons. If you've been putting asterisk next to anything, put an asterisk next to this one, Polo Sport. This is summer in a bottle. I mean, summer in a bottle. Um, aldehydes. What, what's so awesome about this is even though this is an aquatic, this came out in, in 1994. So these two came out in the same year. This just absolutely wipes the floor with Wings for Men. Wings for Men is, um, you know, obviously it has that cheaper feel to it, but Polo Sport... Uh, even though it has a synthetic feel to it, it never smells cheap. It always smells classy uh, because they blended it with, they blended it so well. Harry Fremont made this, and I really think that it's one of his best creations. Um, this and the original Michael Coors, Michael for Men by Michael Coors, two of my favorite Harry Fremonts. Um, but he kept some of the old school notes in here. So there's things like tarragon, cyclamen, geranium, jasmine, rose, rosewood, ginger, the setup is actually very similar. Uh, if you look at the note listing, you'll see similarities between Ocean Rain for Men, Aralfa, and things like Polo Sport. But this just comes across as much more palatable to the average person. Even though it has the Gaiac wood, sandalwood, cedar wood, amber, and musk, it's um, that aldehydic, citrusy, minty, aquatic, Man, they just did a great... This is the scent of high school for me. This is what all the guys wore in high school. I didn't wear it because I never liked to wear what everyone else was wearing. Um, but yeah, this was this was the smell of my locker room in, in high school. Um, polo Sport. Absolute uh, legend for the heat. Speaking of legend for the heat, this stuff is one of the best value for money scents you can buy for the hot weather. This is called O. De Rochas Porom. And this is um, un 
I think Creed took a big page out of Rocha's book and when they made Neroli Sauvage, which is now they're selling it for $500 online or whatever they're selling it for, and it smells like a $20 uh, Rochas. It's it's interesting. This is, um, oh God. And, and this is an older bottle. Uh, the newer cap has this sort of silver cap. Um, but I hear that they're, um, and it says, the, the writing on it is different as well. It says, oh, day, all kind of in one line, whereas this one says, oh, day, Rochas, like this vertical. So anyways, that's just a way to spot the, the bottles, but it basically is this aldehydic lemon, vervain, lime, bergamot, lots of citruses. One of my favorite citrus uh, fragrances for the summer, hands down. But they've mixed it with lots of floral. So it's also floral. So you have to understand that you're going to get some floral bits here, but it's freesia, jasmine, carnation, lily of the valley, rose, and violet. Big floral heart, but it just blends beautifully. And you're not going to be able to go in there and, oh, I smell freesia. Probably not. It's just seamlessly blended, citrusy, green, fresh. Um, and it dries down to this sort of musky, oak mossy. Um, there's still, you know, this was 1993. So there were still remnants of the, of the 80s in there. So they included the oak moss and the vetiver. It's just... I mean, I would almost use the word masterpiece if you could get away with it without being attacked for hyping a $20 fragrance, but it is so, so good. I love Eau de Rochas Pour Homme. Okay, next on the list is another tomato leaf fragrance. This is going to, this and, um, and what about Adam? These two are the tomato leaf fragrance. These two are, are battling for the throne. This came out in 95. This came out in 98, 99. Um, but, uh, Trusardi Luomo is lavender, mandarin orange, tomato leaf, bergamot, something very salty about this one. This is even more salty than the, um, tomato leaf, um, from What About Adam? Cedar, floral notes, spicy notes, geranium, patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, amber, woods, tobacco. Um, so this one has the tobacco, um, but, uh, it's woody and even slightly fruity. There's a little bit of this fruity touch to the to the fragrance, but man, this is, um, for the heat, again, it's bitter and it's salty and it's slightly strange and, but, but, uh, spicy and fruity, um, woody. I would, I would, I would definitely put this on the list if you're looking for a summer fragrance that is vintage and different to what you're going to get in the stores nowadays. Okay. This is the one I kind of cheated on. I wanted to keep everything 2000 or less. This is 2001. This is Trusardi Python for men. And um, it doesn't matter which one you go with. The bottle that I have is Scannon, but I hear the other one, Selective Beauty or whatever, is exactly as good. There's almost no difference. But this is a Louise Turner, probably one of her better creations, honestly. Uh, even though this gets shit on for being simplistic, musky, uh, there is tea. So it has tea, tree bark, mulch, cypress leaves, olive, bourbon vetiver, teak wood, musk, and tonka bean. How's that for an interesting note listing? It does, this is one of those fragrances when you just want to spray away. You just want to go, you just want to go to town with sprays, and then you want to reapply. Um, you can't really overspray this fragrance. Um, it is unique, but even though it's unique, that doesn't mean it's interesting. Sometimes it can be a little bit boring, and that's the downside of this fragrance. But for just a hot day where you just want to spray away, and um, sort of just cake yourself in a fragrance. Python uh, for men is uh, is definitely one for the heat. And then here's a Versace. Very few people like to wear or talk talk about it at all. I, it's my favorite Versace, and it sort of picks up the ball from Nino Ceruti. Poor, uh, sorry, Nino Ceruti Fair Play. It picks up the ball and it runs with it. And I like wearing this in the heat. This is not a cold weather fragrance for me because it has this spicy citrusy. Italian style opening. So it's mandarin orange, bergamot, lemon, orange, lime, petit gras, which is kind of the uh, sticks and twigs of the orange boss, orange uh, tree with uh, there's green touches. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a hint of galbanum uh, or artemisia with some Brazilian rosewood, rosewood, carnation, coriander, jasmine, orris root, amber, vanilla, sandalwood, tonka bean, benzoin, cedar, and moss. So imagine that sort of style that we've been talking about with things like Fair Play and then comes Zeno and then comes uh, Eigner Free Life and then comes 
Heritage and then Escada Por Homme. This sort of fits right one year before Guerlain's Heritage came out. Um, so you can sort of see the style that was popular at the time. And I love that early 90s style before the aquatic wave came and washed everything away. But Versace did it with a twist to their tradition. You know, Ital Italian fragrances traditionally have a very citrusy opening. They do citrus openings different from the way that the French uh, did their fragrances. And you can smell that Italian classic citrus, um, you know, imprint, that style in Versace's Uomo. My favorite Versace fragrance, easily. Uh, I like this better than The Dreamer. I like it better than Versace Man. I like it better than Versace Man, you know, Oud Noir or Versace, whatever. Can't remember all the damn names. Um, the only one that I think could compete with this is Versace uh, Lom, and I don't have a vintage bottle of that. I have a newer bottle, but I bet you if I had a, if I could hunt down a vintage of that, I bet that might turn into my favorite. Okay, last one, last one, uh, and it's a and it's a YSL, and it is a Koros. It's a sport flanker of Koros, new to my collection from the great Anuj at Enchante Perfumes. This is Koros O. To sport. Now, one thing you should know about me, I will wear Koros in the heat. I don't give a damn. But this, they basically took Koros, added a hit of galbanum, and I mean a hint of galbanum, um, and maybe a little bit of herbs or whatever they, you know, um, they, they spruced it up a little bit. I don't know what they did, but it doesn't seem like much. And they sold it as a sport flanker. This is absolutely amazing, by the way. As a Koros lover, I am enthralled with uh, Ode to Sport. If you're going to go for one of the sp sport flankers and you have a vintage taste like I do, Koros Ode to Sport. I think Anuj might even have some uh, at Enchante. Don't know how for how long, but um, yes. And shout out to Armando for putting this on my radar, by the way. Okay, so that's it. A little over an hour and a half. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your favorite summer fragrances are. Uh, appreciate the support everyone's given me. It's always a pleasure and honor to do these and talk about it with you guys. Leave a comment. I try to respond to every single comment personally, um, you know, and, and I can still do that and keep up. Maybe as we continue to grow, that may get harder. But for now, you write me and I will write back. So cheers, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Have a great summer, everyone. Bye, guys.